want to thank you guys for joining us. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing of an NVLink. Actually, two unboxings. Now you might ask the question, what's an NVLink? An NVLink is the way to connect two video cards together other than the PCI bus so that you uh, maximize the use and capacity of those two video cards. And what we're going to do is take a look at this and uh, where we started with this and where we're at right now and where we're going, it'll all make sense once we unbox it. This is something we've not covered before, but when we go from a desktop to a workstation to a server, uh, some of these lines get blurred. And when someone says, what's the best video card for what I'm going to do? So, well, it depends on what you're going to do. So when you ask me what's the best video card, I'm going to give you kind of some insight and some kind of perspective on where I'm at. And I got to tell you where this whole thing started with me was, uh, we're getting ready to do another test. We've still got some more stuff to do with the uh, NVMe drives. And we're going to do an emissivity test where we've got to be able to take that M.2 card. We've got to get the camera on it. So to keep that in the same plane, as long as we're on top of the motherboard and looking down, that's not a problem. But when you try to put that camera on the M.2, I need to be able to interact with that lens. So I've got to get that up in the same plane where I can look down at it so we can get a good thermal on that. And in doing so, some of the questions that were coming through dealt with uh, with video cards, uh, space relations, because of what we've been dealing with. With okay, we're on the uh, Gigabyte WRX40 designator. How do we get access to that last eight-lane slot? Because we had two 16-lane slots and we have two eight-lane slots. We're working on that, and I think I have a solution to it. That also is going to be another video. So that's two videos. But this brought us to the point as we talk about space relations, how this all fits that I thought it would help to understand spacing if we looked at this from the NVLink standpoint. So that's what I'm getting ready to do. So let's unbox these. There's two different ones. And I will say, whatever you're going to get, you need to get... And I will say, if you go down that road for an NVLink bridge, you need to get the one that is specific to your video card. Brand, model, the whole bit. Because even though they're NVLink, there's, there's differences. The ones we're going to be looking at are from EVGA. And, and I will say I had a chance to get my hands on an EVGA RTX 3090. But as I looked at the part number, I didn't understand it. Well, when I investigated the part number, I realized that video card was too, was too big. So a lot of what this is about is about slots. How big is the video card? As you use one of these bridges, you want to make that consideration very prominent, whether it's a single slot, a two slot. The biggest one I've seen of an RTX 3090 was three and a half slots. That's humongous. Um, and, and as we deal with some of this, because the video after this, we're going to look at a uh, riser card and a PCI Express 4.0 riser cable. Again, for the same purpose and intent. How do we get access to these slots and be able to utilize everything? So again, something we've never really had to deal with is a video card that's too big. I just, it's, it's kind of blows my mind when I think about it. But, but as we go forward, that's a big consideration. So we've got desktop video cards. We've had workstation video cards. And as we look at these applications, we need to sort that out. Because we've gone from SLI to NVLink. And NVLink even takes that to a next step. SLI could do four video cards. And, and even backing up from that, going to two technologies, you've got, you've got what uh, AMD does with Crossfire which is still relevant, and I'll mention a little bit of that as we talk about these bridge connectors, and you also, which is using the Infinity Fabric. But then you've also got what uh, NVIDIA is doing, and NVIDIA is taking this to a whole other level. So for those of you that are doing the deep learning for the artificial intelligence, the data scientists, and uh, that's not something that's been in my wheelhouse, but I have been doing some research on that, and uh, wow, it blows my mind what some of you guys are doing. But a question came up today about what was the best video card to use. And I said, okay, what are you doing? My perspective is content creation. Your perspective may be different. And the gentleman said, mathematical. I said, well, can you specifically name the application? I said, when you say mathematical, are you talking about deep learning, artificial intelligence? And yes. I said, okay, well, that, you know, change that one thing changes everything. So I said, you don't want a desktop card, which I would suggest if you're doing a single card, an RTX 3080. But if you need to be able to do two video cards, then you're looking at an RTX 3090. Okay. If you're on a workstation and you're doing artificial intelligence and you need deep learning capabilities, that's a whole different thing because as it relates to NVIDIA, it's all about the CUDA cores. But when you make that leap, when you make that jump, when you make that step, and you're looking at doing artificial intelligence, 
you need tensor cores. And when you go from CUDA cores to tensor cores, won't get a whole lot into it. I'll just say that that's a workstation card. And that has a very specific bridge that goes on those cards. Uh, because what I'm going to describe today is as it relates with these two on two specific cards of the RTX variety. The RTX 2080, the RTX 2080 Ti, and then the other one's going to be for the RTX 3090. Only for the 3090. When you make that leap from a desktop card to a workstation card, it's a different bridge connector. And I will say what I find fascinating, uh, because of the next video coming up, as we were looking at a riser cable, you cannot get an NV-Link cable. The NV-Link bracket is on a PCB. I'm not quite sure what the deal is with that, but uh, let's do this unboxing, see what we've got, and we'll see where we go. Stick with us. Oh, and I hope you guys enjoy this because I think this is a blast once, once you kind of get this into your head because it's all about space relations and you got to think about, you know, where things are going to fit. I've even looked at some cases that do vertical mounts and that's the reason for the bracket, but uh, we'll get back to that later. Let's do this unboxing now. I got to tell you, some of this technology gets pretty wild and pretty exciting. Uh, some of these things we've been aware of, but we've never really done until we, we got to this point as we go from a TRX-40 to a WRX-80. And that's another video we're going to do. We're going to actually talk to you all about building. If I were building a WRX-80, here's what I would use. And then we're going to do a comparison of the TRX-40 versus the WRX-80. But right now, I want to get these out and talk about space relations and show you some of the things we're dealing with. And this all started with emissivity while I was trying to figure out how to get that that M.2 card up and out so I can get that reading on it. And that's what led me to this. And then the question started coming through about, well, you know, how do you how do you do all these things? So unboxing. Let's go overhead. OK, in this box, we actually have two. In this box, we have one. So we're going to start with this one first because this is the one specific to the RTX 80. Now, right now, I don't need to suit up. I just need to get these out and open them up. But once I start touching components in the case, then I will suit up. I am concerned about ESD. That one's open. Let's get this one open. Let's see what we got. Now, when I first ordered these, I thought I was real smart by ordering two of these because they were on sale. And again, these are specific to EVGA. This is for the RTX, and it doesn't say it, but these are EVGA RTX, and these for the RTX 2080 and the 2080 Ti. NV-Link bridge, four slot. And that distinction and designation is important because I'll show you some information on EVGA's website. I thought RTX was RTX. Not all RTXs are the same. Because you've got the RTX 2080, 2080 Ti, then you've got the RTX 30 series, but specifically RTX 3090. Then when you make the leap to a workstation card, it's a whole different game. So I wanted to get these two to compare to show you because they're different and uh, they're extremely different, just, just looking at them. So that's two of the same. I want to be able to have one to flip it over. And uh, yes, these were on sale. That's why I went ahead and got two. And then I realized afterwards why they were on sale. Uh, I ha we have a 2080 Ti in this computer. I'm going to show you how this sets up in the space relations. But uh, when this whole thing started, I, I can't get my hands on that same card if I wanted to. They're just, they're just not available. So as we go forward, this one in this box is for the RTX 3090 and they look very different so what we're going to do is look at the face of them and look at the back of them we're going to look at the differences and similarities this is not something everybody's going to use but this is something everybody should be aware of and I think that will become apparent as we get these out and look at them now because these are computer devices and I am concerned about static electricity I am going to go ahead and suit up because uh, those are PCB boards that are on there and I don't need to take one apart. I did consider it because I thought, oh, no big deal. It's just a hard plastic case. It's got some lights on it. We'll take it apart and pull the cables out. We'll be flexible. Not going to happen. And the reason that's relevant and important because when you're using a setup like this, you've got two video cards and they have to maintain a space relation to them. So if you're trying to take one of these cards and mount it vertically, it ain't going to happen. If you try to take two of these cards and mount vertically, you can't. They're not going to be connected. The only way they stay connected is if they stay in the same plane. And that's what got me to thinking about how this is going to work. Because I've even looked at some cases and I found a case that would mount two GPUs vertically. But if they're mounted vertically, those two GPUs are separate. They're not connected. Well, the connectivity is where you gain the benefit of those two cards. In other words, instead of having two cards that have 12 gigs on them each, you have 
even though they connect with the computer on the PCI bus, the PCI bus is the slowest point in the chain, this is a faster link going with the NVIDIA link. This scales up to an extraordinary amount of GPUs. Uh, for example, the servers that take this technology where you go from a uh, NV link to an NV, uh, which is an NV bridge, to an NV switch. Wow. Can you imagine taking 16 video cards and linking those all together? I'll just say Lambda Server, and I'll put a little link to that so you can get some insight. But if someone's building that kind of machine, uh, the next step in the evolution as we talk about NVIDIA might be to talk about Mellanox. And those that know about Mellanox network cards and Mellanox switches, whew, uh, for the deep learning uh, data scientists out there, uh, we might get into some of that because it's still relevant even with the TRX40 designator. Now, this is also relevant with the uh, WRX80, but as it relates to this machine, I'm going to get one out. Okay, starting with these th that are kind of fancy looking. I think it'll be a little easier to open it from the bottom. Now, if you notice, there's a top and a bottom because we can see the label and we can read it. So we're going to take this out of the box and I'll flip it over. And that's the interconnect. Now the interconnect on this end and the interconnect on this end. If you notice, these are keyed, so you don't have to worry about getting one of these in backwards, which is really nice. This is the NVIDIA NV Link, and these are made by EVGA. And with that interconnect that goes on that video card, which is specific again to the 2080 and the 2080 Ti, they're keyed so they cannot be put in backwards. So as this goes down on the video card, there's a top and a bottom. So the next thing we're going to do. We're going to take a look at this as it relates inside the computer. Now, right now, while we're working on this box, if you notice, the first 16-lane slot has the uh, RSM.2 card, and the second 16-lane slot has the EVGA RTX 2080 Ti. Got the special bracket they make for that for the power. Right next to that, in the second 8-lane slot, is the Thunderbolt 3 card. Now, this connector would sit right here like this, and if you'll notice, as that bridges. And I'll pull the cap off so you can see. You don't ever want to touch these connectors, but if you notice that's keyed. So as we look at this, this key here and this key lines up. So as you'll notice, there's a notch here for the edge of the connector and a notch here for this bridge right here. So this cannot be confused. You cannot put it in backwards. And as this goes down, this would ride and rest right there. Now that is made for four slots. And a four slot connector means your video card, because of consideration for the first eight lane slot, whatever RTX 3090 you get needs to be two slots wide or less. If it is more than two slots wide, then you will block that slot. Okay, we've got one subscriber who said, I've got an RTX 3090 I want to put in the first 16 lane slot. And I believe he was like three slots wide. So that means he covers that first eight lane slot. So he says, I want Thunderbolt. That's my priority. So can I put the Thunderbolt 3 card in that last eight lane slot? Once the firmware is updated, it should be able to work. Right now, there's an issue. And when we ran the D4 code, I, I know what you guys said, and I appreciate that, that PCI Express out of resources. Um, I'll just to say that there is a, uh, a depth and a breadth to that that we may have the solution for. I'm going to show it in another video. If we do, I'll show you what works and why. If we don't, then i got some more research to do. To the gentleman that asked, can I put my RTX 3090 that's three slots wide in that first 16 lane slot? And can I put the Thunderbolt 3 adapter in that last eight lane slot? Yes, you can. But I would strongly encourage you to update the firmware in that first eight lane slot to do that. Now, you might possibly need to leave the USB 2 header off. Uh, try it, because if the USB 2 is header is on there and the firmware is not updated, it will not boot, the system will not come on, it won't do squat. So once you get that firmware update, then you can put it over here. Now, if you want to try to update the firmware in that last 16 lane slot, we didn't try it. And remember, this is the version 1 motherboard of the Gigabyte TRX40 Designator. This Thunderbolt 3 card is a version 1. Now, there's a new version 2 card. I expect for those that have this motherboard, which is the uh, second iteration of this motherboard, I think it's 1.1, you probably possibly have the version 2 of that Thunderbolt 3 card. We have one around here somewhere. I haven't found it yet. Still looking for it. But when I do, we'll do another video with a firmware update for the version 2 of the Thunderbolt 3 card. But for your question to reiterate, yes, you can do what you want to do. An RTX 3090 that's three slots wide and a Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3 card in the last eight lane slot. It will work. Update that firmware. So 
you're going to have to figure out some way, and I hope you got a secondary video card, because remember, for Thunderbolt to do its thing, it's all about drivers, drivers, drivers. Motherboard, chipset, video card, and then the Thunderbolt. So if you have a, a lesser card that takes up less space, that doesn't take up or occupy that uh, first eight lane slot, that's the way to go to update the firmware. That's why we did it. We got a video on it. So going up to the next question, as we look at spacing, the question becomes up, can I put in two video cards? And uh, you shouldn't have a problem. Apparently, there is a resource allocation and there's an order of orientation as those resources are allocated going from video to Thunderbolt and because Thunderbolt uses some memory going to the M.2 RS card. There's no way to allocate memory for the RS card. Uh, we may be able to allocate memory for USB. That's another issue. But we can allocate memory for the Thunderbolt. So as we look at the depth and the breadth, that D4 Air, I don't think the breadth of that has anything to do with slots. I think it has something to do with memory allocation. So I think that's the depth of that, which means turning that little feature on in the BIOS should solve that problem. I don't know if it has. I'm theorizing right now, but I'm going to check it. I'll verify it. I'll walk through it in another video, and I'll share with you what I find. But what I wanted to share with you right now is how this works. Because another way to look at this, I think a picture is worth a thousand words. When you look at slots, you think of here's one slot. Now this slot over here is blank in this particular case. And again, this is the Gigabyte TRX40 designator. So what we have is the first slot, and that's the M.2 card. And over here is the 2080 Ti. Now if you'll notice, these two are blank, and I leave them blank because I swap video cards out. If I put the RTX 3080 in here, excuse me, I believe it's two and a quarter slots. It's just enough where I can't get access to that first eight lane slot in there. So I wanted to show you from this side what that looks like and what you're dealing with. Two slots versus three slots. So it's the same thing when you're looking inside. So what I wanted to do is to take a look at this and look at the space relations on the back of the case as we look at slots. For example, this first slot being used, this slot is blank because we're right where the uh, cooler would be if we took a look inside the case. And what I wanted to show was in relation to that four slot bracket, that four slot bracket bridges for the NV link from this slot one, two, three. This is four, but actually over here number five, but that's considered four slots. So I wanted you to get some idea of what we're talking about with space relations. This is considered a four slot bridge. One, two, three, and that would be number four. And as you look at the slots, the RTX 2080 Ti we have is two slots. And the RTX 3080 that we have is two and a quarter slots. But if we went with an RTX 3090, it's either got to be one slot wide or two slots wide. And that brings up another question. If your video card is, uh, if you can get your hands in RTX 3090 that's one slot wide, congratulations, good luck. I like to know what's up with that because those are the ones that require the water block, like an EKW water block. I've not seen even an ETA on those. The only ones I've seen that you can get in line for are the two slot variety. Now I can put up some links I'll show you later with EVGA. If you're looking at a one slot, then it's got a water block. If you're looking at a two slot 3090, then it's going to have um, its own closed cooler system, which can be either mounted to the front or to the top of the case. I don't think I'd do that to the bottom. But that's pretty easy to deal with if you've got two, one to the front, one to the top. Now, if you go anything wider than that, then you limit your uh, capability to use that first eight lane slot. So I'm just saying considerations. But if you already have it and it's more and it's wider than what you really want, then you're going to have one video card and one I.O. card because uh, that's just the way it is. So if you're three slots wide on your video card, one, two, three. As long as you're less than three and a half, then you'll still have access to having your RTX 3090 here, but your RSM.2 over here. And because of the allocation, these two cards for some reason have to be fired. This this has to go one, two, then three. Uh, if, if this changes order like I have now, this works. But if I separate these and I go one, two, and then three, that won't work. It has to go one, two, three. And I think later when we get more into that, it'll, uh, it'll be more self-explanatory. So hopefully that describes the what, and I hope that helps to address the why, and I hope you understand the where it all goes about. Now this particular one, like I said, which is kind of fancy looking, 
is for the RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti. Okay, that's one. Now let's do an unboxing on the other one. And it's curious on the size of the box because the pictures of the one for the RTX 3090 make it look bigger. Picture's always worth a thousand words. I like the way these are factory sealed. I wish they'd go back to factory sealing motherboards, especially for what they cost. And that is the bridge for the EVGA NVIDIA NVLink for an RTX 3090. And if you'll notice, the connectors on those are very different. Look how big the connector is and the spacing. The one on top is the larger one, and that's for the RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti. You'll see where the key is at. And this one here on the bottom, the gray one, this is for the RTX, the NVIDIA RTX 3090. And you can see how much smaller it is and see where the key's at. It's just off center, but as you, as you look at the face of these, they also have the same top and bottom. So there's no getting them confused. Now physically they look pretty close to the same. So that's a good indication of four slots wide. But when we get to this side, so those are very different, completely different. So those are for NVLink to connect two video cards. That's kind of wild if you ask me. Now, why NVLink? Again, it allows us to link two video cards so that those two video cards become one. So instead of two cards that are working together trying to do 12 gigs and 12 gigs, you've got one 24 gig card. And if you've got one 24 gig card and, and another 24 gig card, then you've got two cards that now equal 48 gigs. So in an RTX 3090 that's got over 10,000 CUDA cores, wow, you go from like 10,500 to uh, 21,000 CUDA cores. That blows my mind. Uh, I'm just uh, thinking out loud. So that's something to think about. So if you're going to go down that road and you need that capability, that's how that's done. Now, will we ever use these? I have no idea other than to demonstrate for space relations because I thought this would come in really handy for what we're doing and what we're trying to show how this all works. Because as you take a video card and you try to put two video cards together and you talk about bringing them up out of the case, then you're talking about a vertical GPU mount. Well, you're not going to find a vertical GPU mount that can handle two video cards that way. I, I've seen a vertical mount that'll take a video card and a video card, but most of the vertical mounts, uh, and one that we're going to show in the next video, it drops down. So you, you lose access to everything on the motherboard if it fits in that space, and it usually takes about seven slots. Well, seven slots, that's all the business, just to get the uh, GPU mounted vertically. So for anybody that is thinking about doing this for space relations, the thickest card I've seen that you could mount vertically is 2.75 slots wide. So that's a consideration. But if you're going to use two GPUs with a riser cable, no. Not if you're going to use two. If you're going to do one, you can make it work. And we're going to show one that's PCI Express 4 in the next video as well as a bracket. But uh, our original intent was not to try to get the GPU up and mounted vertically, but our original intent was to get the uh, M.2 card up and mounted vertically so we could get a picture of it for those thermal readings, which we're still going to do. So, you know, we solve one problem, we answer a question, then we create another problem, and that's where I've been at with all this. I was waiting to get these so we could talk about this because uh, it kind of blew my mind. I never had really dealt with this. SLI has been around for, oh, 2004, 2005. And SLI, originally, you could do four video cards. But SLI is the old way. Now, with NVLink, you can go up to 16 video cards. But you're talking about a server, which is a different animal. We build desktops. And we're now looking at building a workstation. Uh, but if you want to build a server, then I would say you're looking at something like an Epic. And for those that are doing the deep learning where you need access to two terabytes of memory, gosh, I got some stuff I'm eager to show you on the uh, WRX80, but I got to wait for that video. Let's take a look at some links. I always said pictures worth a thousand words, so I, I, hope that, I hope that helps for anyone that's interested in what's involved. Just be sure you get the right one. You want to buy the brand that is specific to your brand and model of video card. Remember that. Now, when we cross over into deep learning workstation solutions, that's what we're getting into. Even though we're on the TRX40 designator, as we go from the TRX40 chipset to WRX80, uh, there's, there's things we have to consider. Now, as long as we're using one of these connectors, an NVLink, the requirement for this is two 16-lane slots. So whatever chipset you've got, you've got to have two 16-lane slots. 
and I'll show you some stuff that AMD is doing with Crossfire because it's all about the fabric. But as it relates to what EVGA is doing, if you need to scale this up, with SLI it was four video cards, but with the uh, NVLink it's two video cards. If you want to scale beyond two video cards, then you go from an NVLink to an NVSwitch, and that's a whole other animal. And, but I'll show you some links that I think you might find interesting and relevant for workstations. And such is the case of this link from NVIDIA, Deep Learning Workstation Solutions. What I like about this, when they talk about building or buying, takes you to a video. But you have to scroll on down. You'll learn about the NVIDIA DGX station that's built specifically for the NVIDIA Tesla cards. And uh, that's, uh, that's a whole other animal. Now, there's NVIDIA-powered data science workstations in laptops and also in desktops. And everything we do has always been about the CUDA cores, but uh, Tensor cores, I believe, came out starting with, I believe, the 1650s. And I want to interject this right now. For those of you that are looking to, to buy a computer and you're having trouble trying to find a video card, two models I have recommended so far. One was Asus uh, for content creation, and the other was the uh, Alienware. Both of those, I believe, had 3070 cards in them. What some vendors are doing are taking those RTX 3070 cards out and they're putting in like one of the uh, 1650 cards. Man, don't do that because they didn't change the price. All they did was let the price where it is, put in about a six-year-old video card and said, here, and uh, you're still paying for something you ain't getting. So you got to know your specs. And they're, and they're putting in low-end power supplies. A good example to look at for what needs to be built is we can take a look at the links for the uh, P620. The, the Lenovo ThinkStation P620, which is a Threadripper Pro, they started a 1,000 watt power supply and that's where they go at. Now the four processors, that bottom end processor, that's the only way you can get it is if you buy that, that particular machine. Now, of the uh, four processors available, there are three processors shown on the Lenovo 620. The first two are the lowest end processor you can't buy anyplace else. Their highest one they make is the lowest of the three processors you can get to build a WRX80. I just want to interject that. So you got to you got to think about all this. Everything is in a state of flux. It's all in a state of play until we get to the point where we build and execute. And right now it's about what's available. So I want to show you some of these workstation cards because it may be relevant about what's available, but they're pricey. So you remember we go from CUDA cores for content creation to we go to Tensor cores for workstation performance where you're trying to do data mining, where it's about deep learning, artificial intelligence. So, and I, and I have had some uh, interesting discussions through email with data scientists and with some of you that are uh, on the website, and I appreciate that. Uh, some of the stuff you guys are doing blows my mind, and I'm, and I'm honored that you ask for our, our input on that. Okay, desktop workstations with NVIDIA RTX. NVIDIA RTX powered workstations, here we are. Available NVIDIA RTX and NVIDIA Quadro. And if you'll notice, these are NVIDIA RTX Quadros and NVIDIA RTX. So the, these Quadro cards are all workstation cards. This is where you go from, like I said, CUDA cores to Tensor cores. And Tensor cores are a, uh, I'll just say it's a, it's a subset of the CUDA cores, but it's specific to those that are doing deep learning. And the lowest end card to get into the platform is a Quadro RTX 4000. I think those cards right now are, have a list price of around $1,000. The ones I've seen, though, for sale that are available are around $1,250. And when you go to the next model, price right now doubles. It's, uh, it's incredible what they go to. And if you talk about doing two of those cards, you start with one, go to another one. Uh, what's interesting with these cards, as we look at the Quadros, they're all one slot solution cards. So that makes life simple. Now, when we go to the uh, motherboard that we're going to talk about on the WRX80, it's interesting to look at the slot assignments for video cards if you're using one video card, three video cards, or four video cards. But remember, if you're doing four video cards, that's SLI if you're going to connect them. If you're doing two video cards, they don't specify, but based on the spacing, for these NV links, there's usually that one gap in there, one slot uh, open, so they have some room to breathe. Just want to interject that. So this is one direction you can go with a Quadro RTX 4000, 5000, a 6000, an 8000, or an A600. 
and uh, the prices go up exponentially. Now there's another chart I'm going to show you where you can compare and see where the tensor cores are at on these. Let's see if we can find it. Now there's the accessories for the bridges. Now you'll notice these are NV-Link, SLI, and SYNC2. NV-Link is the current technology. And if you'll notice, there's a different NV-Link bridge specific to the card you're looking at. Now, which GPU is right for you? This is another link we've got. And this starts with a 1650 that I mentioned. Now, if you'll notice in this area, I'm going to click on this. And using the left-right arrows on the keyboard, if you will scroll left and right, you'll be able to see there's a lot more information there than, than what meets the eye in the beginning. So I'm going to scroll this over a little bit to the right. And we're going to get to where we get to the tensor cores. With the GTX 1650, tensor cores, none mentioned. We don't get tensor cores till we get to an RTX 2060. Tensor cores in the RTX 2060, the RTX 3060, 3070. Now there's no mention here of an RTX uh, 3080 or a 3090. So apparently those weren't out when this was published. This, oh, here's an RTX 3080. So the RTX 3080 and there's a Quadro RTX 4000. It shows, uh, and if we scroll back up, and tab over to the left. Photography, graphic design, broadcasting, gaming, ray tracing. Now, again, I'll say, for content creation, I wouldn't do anything less than RTX uh, 3060. And my preference, I think the best bang for the buck is the RTX 3080 if you can get your hands on one. And right now, the best way to buy one is in a machine. But if you want to build, we've told this before and I'll tell it again, sign up with a vendor of choice. Get in their queue, register to be notified, and then wait. That's the best you're going to be able to do. So these links are all with NVIDIA and I can show you some links that I'll get to with uh, EVGA. But I wanted to make the distinction of these cards. If I had to go with a workstation card, we've used the uh, AMD Radeon cards. In fact, when we built the, because uh, I've always thought, I don't know, for the last probably five years, I thought video cards were too high at list price. And now, with the scalpers, wow, it's crazy because of the data mining. Uh, mining, not, not data mining, but just the miners. So for people that want to build a computer right now, uh, the biggest sticking point, number one is going to be the video card, number two may be your power supply. Because I'll just cut to it now, uh, as you look at what this NVIDIA uh, NV, uh, link is going to take, one video card might be 750 watts, two of those might be... Uh, 1500 watts. So if you can get your hands on a 1600 watt power supply, that's where you're at. You're not just looking at the power, but you're also looking at the connectors. And I'm going to get into that when we look at the WRX80. But as it relates to these, these connectors for the NV Link, it's important to keep in mind, keep in mind of your space relations, four slots wide, how wide your video card is, where that's going to sit. You have to have two 16 lane slots. We can do that on the TRX40 and we can do that on the WRX80. Now, if I were to go back and say on the X399, yeah, I've got two 16-lane slots. I could put two of those in there. So that's still a doable thing, but I would need to up my power supply. You know, it's change one thing, changes everything. So as, as we uh, do the hocus pocus trying to figure all this out, what I want to help you to understand is think about all these factors that are in play that as you make one decision, how it affects the other decisions. It's like dominoes. And uh, we want those all to fall our direction. So as we look at these and the RTX for the uh, tensor cores, we get that as I said up here at the 2060. But I would start and I would say a Quadro RTX 4000 if you're going for a workstation card. Now you don't get as many CUDA cores, but you get tensor cores. And when we built the uh, X399s, the workstation cards we chose because at the time it was bang for the buck. I couldn't justify spending a thousand dollars or twelve hundred dollars for something like a Quadro 4000 when I could get an AMD Radeon Pro WX 7100 for 500 bucks. At the time it made sense. And when you consider for content creation, 90% of the rendering is the CPU, 10% for the most part is on the GPU. That's where your uh, effects are rendered for the screen that you're looking at while all that stuff is, is uh, being played back. So if you've got uh, GPU intensive uh, special effects, that can change things, but for the most part. So as we go forward and we're looking for more bang for the buck, everything you're doing is all about CUDA cores. And uh, CUDA cores are NVIDIA. It's just a matter of which one do you want. We don't build gaming machines. We build work machines. And because of those of you that are data scientists coming to us about these kind of work machines, we go from 
where we put 256 gigs of RAM in a machine. Now you're looking at a WRX80 that'll do two terabytes. And I am really excited to share with you some stuff from RAM on that. But right now, this is all about these brackets. So as we look at the RTX, a 3080, you get tensor cores. And again, I think that's the best bang for the buck, but that's a single card. If you're in a situation where you think you're going to do two cards, then you're looking at either a uh, RTX 3090 or you're looking at uh, a Quadro RTX uh, 4000. So I hope that kind of gives you some uh, depth and breadth to the situation. We're all about bang for the buck, and we have to think about the what, where, and why. So we, we looked at the what, which is the bracket. We've had two different brackets we looked at. We've talked about the why we need them, and we've talked about where they've got to be located. They can't just be anywhere. Those cards have to be in and on that bus, no cable. So in this next video coming up, we are going to talk about a riser cable and a riser card but we will still have these brackets as handy access as we talk about that. So one last thing before I forget, I promised I'd talk a little bit about the uh, connector that's used on the new Radeon Pro. I believe it's the new Radeon Pro 7. Let's take a look at that. I cannot find an actual picture, but there's an artist rendition that's as close as we can get to how they're doing crossfire with their fabric, with the Infinity fabric. Now AMD's new workstation card is the AMD Radeon Pro 7. So if you look at this, we're looking at two video cards. It's an artist rendition, and that cap, that's as good as I can get. I'll show you another picture, though, of the video card that shows a side view, how that mounts for that Infinity Fabric. Now here's a good example of, on the same page as you scroll down to the card. If you notice this area at the top, I'll click on that plus mark. And this is for the AMD Infinity Fabric link for workload sharing. And this can address two video cards. And this allows you to harness the power of supercomputers. Something else you have to think about, we're going from uh, a high-end desktop to uh, high-performance computing. And high-performance computing is a whole other animal. That uh, borders on workstation, but that's more on the server side. And high-performance computing is what a lot of this artificial intelligence deep learning is all about. But uh, you have access with a workstation card to get into that environment, to be able to use two video cards, to be able to bridge that, to do those data sets and those data models. Uh, two things I'm finding that people are needing. One, they need the processing power of the video card. And two, they're needing the processing power of the RAM. So as we've been able to go from 256 gigs of RAM on the TRX40, when we get the WRX80, it can go to two terabytes. Two terabytes is what you need for that kind of activity. However, I'm going to show you a link on Kingston's site that right now with their technology, that can only go to 512 gigs of RAM. So uh, from 256 to 512 is double but it's not enough for what you need to do. So you may be looking something more like an epic server. But, you know, as this gets into this area, it's uh, amazing what we're able to do right now as it is. But I want to show you this. So there's 16 gigs of memory on that card. So two of those together, that'd be 32 gigs. And it requires a 16-bit slot, PCI Express 4.0. So PCI Express 4.0 pretty much tells you what kind of computer you're going to build. Because if all these new video cards are going to have to have PCI Express 4, the X399 is PCI Express 3. The TRX40 is PCI Express 4. The WRX80 is PCI Express 4. So all these things have to be thought about, talked about, and considered. So I hope that helps. Now, I've got a press release up that talks about the AMD Infinity Link. And I've got another link that will talk about the price of that Infinity Link fabric. But I cannot find anyone that has it. Now, what I wanted to show was that this technology... Uh, what's available and what AMD is doing. Now, when we had the WX7100, we didn't have access to that connector. I went looking for it. Do they, did they ever make it? Do they make it? I don't know. I couldn't find one. And I have no idea the price. But I've got a price on the one for the new card, which is a different animal. But again, I can't find anybody that's got it. I may try to uh, contact AMD and see if I can get some information on it. But based on the information I asked for last time, all I got was crickets. So I'll... Uh, I'll do some digging and see what I can find. And if you guys hear anything about it, I'd like to know more about it because that's what we're about, sharing the technology. Now, this shows the retail price on the Radeon Pro 7 should be at $1,900. I've seen them less. And this article was published back in May of 2020, so almost a year old. But the big thing I wanted to show you, that's about those connectors. So as we've talked about those connectors, that's kind of the depth and breadth of it. If you're going to do two video cards, you're going to need it. And if you're going to need it, you got to think about that width of that video card when you buy it. But if you're only doing one video card, it doesn't matter. 
So I want to thank you for watching this about the NV Link. So coming up in this next video, we're going to take a look at a PCI Express 4 riser cable and a riser bracket. So hope you'll stay with us. And after that, we're going to talk about if I were building a WRX80, the considerations of the depth and breadth. Remember, a computer is three things, RAM, motherboard, and processor. With considerations for the video card and the power supply, everything is in a state of flux. Hope you enjoyed this. I want to thank you for watching, and we are on to the next video.